The World AIDS Day is marked on the 1st of December every year to encourage communities to unite against HIV, show support for people living with the disease and remember those who have passed away owing to AIDS. In Nigeria, the theme of the day is knowing your status and I had a conversation with the head of the National Agency for the Control of AIDS. Hello there, welcome to Dateline Abuja. I'm Gloria Umezuke. Nigeria has the second largest HIV epidemic in the world and one of the highest rates of new infections in sub-Saharan Africa, with 3.1 million people living with the infection as of 2017. In our interview, we talk about the prevalence rate efforts to stop the new infections and access to antiretroviral treatment. But first, what are the stories that made headlines within the week in the nation's capital? The federal government and officials of the Academic Staff Union of Universities met earlier in the week, but could not reach a resolution. The meeting, which was presided over by the Minister of Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, lasted over three hours. And at the end of the meeting, the national president of ASU, Professor Biodun Ogunyemi, says the meeting to resolve the strike action, which began on the 4th of November 2018, will continue at a later date. We have started the discussion, we are continuing, and the discussion will continue at a later date. That's all I can say for now. That's all I can say for now, please. That's all I can say for now. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. President Mohamed Buhari has approved increase in the salaries, allowances and pension for policemen in the country. This came to the fore when members of the Police Service Commission and the leadership of the Nigerian police paid a courtesy visit to President Mohamed Buhari at the State House. We need the welfare of the police to be enhanced because the idea of security in our nation has become a problem and the police should be encouraged in order to see that all eyes are on them and the entire populace of this country would want the police to perform and that's the main reason why we are here that the police needs to be encouraged the police is a friend of the people and the people want to see more and expect more in the police force the federal government has confirmed that nine persons have tested positive to yellow fever from the samples recently collected from some communities that are experiencing an outbreak of yellow fever in Edo State. Speaking at a press conference on the update of yellow fever outbreaks across some states in Nigeria, the executive director of the National Primary Health Care Development Agency said that a total of 41 out of the over 1,600 suspected cases reported between September 2017 and now have been confirmed positive by the World Health Organization laboratory in Dakar. Tests done in laboratories have shown that nine of the samples tested positive for yellow fever. And as such, samples have been forwarded to Dakar for confirmation. In order to quickly respond to the outbreak, the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, the Edo State Epidemiology Team, the World Health Organization, and other international development partners are working together to rapidly conduct a comprehensive investigation and respond appropriately to the situation on ground. A total of 113 female and 48 male bagged first class at the August 2012 bar examination of the Nigerian Law School. In all, over 4,000 students, including 11 candidates from previous bar examinations, were successful. This breakdown was given by the Director General of the school, Professor Isa Chiroma, at the call to bar ceremony in Abuja. 161 students were graded first class. 
694 were graded second class upper, 1,275 were graded second class lower, while 2,649 were graded pass in the law school. It may interest you also to note that 113 of the first class candidates are all female. The National Peace Committee, led by the former head of state, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, has presented a draft of the peace accord for the 2019 general election to political parties. It is necessary that we maintain a violent free election because invariably the people you want to lead must be alive in the first place before you leave them. Thank to Nigeria, thank to the international community, and thank to our contestants in 2015 who were able to stamp out the violence. And it is our hope that this time around will improve on what took place in 2015. The federal government approved a reduction in the fees for examinations conducted by the Joint Admissions and Matriculations Board and the National Examinations Council from 5,000 to 3,500 Naira beginning from January 2019. This is part of decisions made at this week's Federal Executive Council meeting. Whether it is because of the election or not election, I think parents deserve to have the fees reduced. Most of what is being charged actually doesn't have to be, because a lot of it is being siphoned by corrupt officials. So accordingly, from January 19, 2019, jam fees will reduce from 5,000 to 3,500 for the UTME. For the sec senior secondary school certificate charged by NECO, it will reduce from 11,350 to 9,850. And for the basic education certificate by NECO, again, it will be reduced from 5,500 to 4,000. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbajo is insisting that the fight against corruption must remain central to the federal government's economic policy. He said this at the opening of the inaugural Nigeria Diaspora Investment Summit. There is no country in the world that can progress any kind of economic policy if there is the sort of corruption that we have seen in our country in the past few years. There is no way that an economic policy can be sustained unless we deal with the issue of grand corruption. It's impossible. And that is why this must be central to our economic policies. It must be central. The fight against corruption must be central to whatever economic policy we, 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 want, to, that we want to progress. The federal government is planning to integrate people living with HIV and AIDS into the social intervention program. This was disclosed by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, at a ceremony to mark the 2018 World AIDS Day. Government has for the first time ensured that the funds required to keep all those persons living with HIV on our treatment program in Taraba and Abia states is fully accommodated in the 2019 budget. Moving forward, we have committed to support an additional 50,000 persons commencing HIV treatment every year in our budgets. In line with our commitment to support people living with HIV to live life positively, we will facilitate the integration of vulnerable 